Hello, hi. Um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something different. Uh, I realize that studying for some neuroanatomy is good, but it's nice also to share it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to try to teach you guys about the brainstem and the pons. <laughs> it's actually my, one of my favorite subjects because um, uh, the this past week we were actually able to um, use cranial anatomy and go inside the cranial structures of the human brain and expose not only the medulla oblongata, the midbrain, the hindbrain, and the uh, post and the hind and the forebrain actually. And we were able to um, you know, remove the cranial structure, the, the cranial plate, the parietal, in the, in the junction between the parietal, the frontal, the occipital, and the temporal lobes of the uh, cranial structure. Um, so I'm going to share with you guys the pons because I thought this is very, very interesting. Uh, and this is very critical to human uh, life, respiration, um, thinking, mobility, uh, and, and whatnot, everything actually. So I'm going to share with you guys, okay? So the pons are an interior to the, is located anterior to the cerebellum. It connects to the, the medulla oblongata, the midbrain. And the fibers that cross from side to side that make up the middle of cerebellar peduncles include the basal groove and the midline for the basal artery. And uh, we see the trigeminal nerve, and the trigeminal nerve is the trigeminal nerve is actually very important because it is located in the anterior lateral surface, and the small medial motor root and large lateral sensory root. So in the groove that we find between the pons and the middle of Bongata, we see the emergence of the medial to the lateral region, the three specific nerves. Now these nerves are called the cranial nerves, one of the, one of the 12 cranial nerves. It includes the abducent nerve, the facial nerve, and the vestibular cochlear nerve. And um, so when we see the, on the posterior surface of the pon, we see the formation of an upper half and the lower half of the fourth ventricle. And it's triangular shape. And this is in triangular shape, so what I meant, what I meant to say. Um, it is limited by the superior cerebellar peduncle and divided into two halves by the medial sulcus laterally by the medial eminence, and bounded laterally by the sulcus limitans. The inferior end of the, of the medial eminence is, is, uh, the, leads to the formation of what I meant to say is the facial colliculus. The facial colliculus is formed by the root of the facial nerve, and this root of the facial nerve continues to wind around the nucleus of the abducent nerve. So we see, the, we see that the internal structure of the pons is divided into the uh, posterior part, which is called the tegmentum, and the anterior part, called the basal part by the trapezoidal body. So the, the, the posterior part is tegmentum, anterior part, basal part by the trapezoidal body. Now these two levels will cross section at the posterior level and also at the anterior level of the pons, which is rather interesting. Uh, it shows that uh, you know uh, every single structure in the brain has uh, interconnections and uh, indices that uh, make these um, allow for the proper uh, relegation of information from afferent to efferent nerves back and forth from sensory uh, to re uh, reaction, motor reaction, autonomic reaction, peripheral reaction, um, and voluntary reaction. You know, these are things that are very critical to human, um, human life. So let's talk about the internal structures of the pons. At the caudal level, we see the medial lemniscus, which is the anterior part of the tegmentum. And in the facial nucleus, we see that it makes the facial colliculus. Then another structure we see is the medial longitudinal fasciculus, which is a pathway for vestibular and cochlear nucleus. And then we see a medial vestibular nucleus. The medial vestibular nucleus is composed of the posterior and anterior cochlear nuclei. And um, and beneath this we see the posterior. Uh, we see the, I mean we see the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve and its tracts. And then we also see the trapezoidal body, which is which are nothing but fibers from cochlear nerve and the trapezoidal body. And of course, uh, we see the basilar part of the pons, uh, which has a pontian nucleus, a cortical pontine fibers of the cross cerebri of the midbrain, which then terminate into the pontine nerve. And uh, the accents give rise to the transverse fibers, which cross the midline and intersect the corticospinal and cortical nuclear tracts. The transverse fibers will then enter the midline uh, and the middle cerebellar peduncle, which is distributed to the cerebral hemisphere. Now, as I said earlier, uh, we talked about the uh, motor nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. Below this, we see the latter part of the fourth ventricle. And it's very interesting because, you know, when the principal, sens uh, the principal sensory nucleus of the trigeminal nerve is also found in the lateral motor, which is continued inferiorly to the, north, to the nerve of the spinal tract. 
and the superior cerebral peduncle, which is located in the posterior lateral to the motor nerve, which is joined by the anterior spinocerebral tract. As we can see, I'll provide um, a graph and some illustrations for this for you guys to see. And then we see the lateral meniscus, lateral lemniscus. So uh, another a clinical aspect that we have to remember is that uh, astrocytoma, which is basically a cancerous uh, carcinomic uh, aggregation, and the astrocytes. Astrocyte is nothing but support cells, support structures of the neurons in the in the central nervous system. They're just they provide uh, the structures to maintain the hemostasis, the nutrient output, the nutrient input, and the health of the overall neuron itself, and the oligodendrocytes, etc. That make the, the they make the complices um, of the neuron, the neuron cell body. So remember the astrocy astrocytoma, which is the cancer I talked about earlier. Uh, the astrocytoma of the pons occur in childhood is the most common tumor in the brainstem. That is, remember that is the most common tumor in the brainstem for any childhood. Um, this is a result of, um, I guess, um, it can result of anything: uh, can, mutation in uh, transcription, excessive excessive transcription processes, which have not been inhibited by regulators or um, co co inhibitors. Um, so we finished uh, the that structure. So let's talk about the anesthesia. Okay, so when we do have um, when we have uh, uh, damages on certain parts of the of the brainstem, it can cause problems. Okay, such as ipsilateral cranial nerve paralysis, weakness of the facial muscles on the same side, the weakness of the lateral reactus muscle on the on one or both sides, nystagmus, weakness of the jaw muscles, impairment of the hearing, and contralateral hemiparesis. Um, we also see anesthesia to light touch with preservation of appreciation of pain over the skin of face, which also observe contralateral sensory defects in the trunk and the limbs. We also observe when uh, when we have hemorrhage, it's uh, it is extensive and bilateral. The pupils may be pinpoint, quote unquote pinpoint. Patient may become um, poikilothermic, which is cold. Uh, be, uh, become severe uh, because of severe damage of the pons has been cut off by the body to the heat regulating centers of the hypothalamus. That is a result. The reason, be, be, due to the fact that there is severe damage to the pons in hemorrhage, the, there is a severance of the body from the heat regulating centers of the hypothalamus. As a result, it makes sense that the patient becomes poikilothermic, which is cold. Get it? All right. If you have any questions, just ask me about this later. Uh, the pontine hemorrhage, remember the pontine hemorrhage, the pons is supplied by the basal artery and the anterior, inferior, and superior cerebral arteries. So if the hemorrhage has occurs from one of these arteries and is unilateral, there will be observably, uh, of course, uh, observably, facial paralysis on the same side of the lesion, which is called ipsilateral lesion. Um, an infarction of the pons is due to, th to either a thrombosis or embolism of the basal artery or its branches. And this involves the paramedian area of the pons, the cortical spinal tracts, the ponti nuclei, and the fibers passing to the cerebellum through the middle cerebral peduncle may be damaged. Um, okay, so that's basically the pons. If you have any questions, uh, give me a reply, and I'll show some pictures. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.